The food theorist. Food theory Logan Paul is lying about Prime. You know what I'm saying? This randomly popped up on my uh my uh YouTube feed, right? And I wasn't subscribed. I didn't know they had a food theorist channel. You feel me? I know they have a film. Yeah, the film theorist, right? I'm subscribed to that. This one, <clears throat> I didn't know existed. So I was like, you know what? Let's subscribe. You y'all see it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my dumb hold on. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I did it, okay? I did it. And I gave it a light. Let's get it. Almost exactly one year ago, massive YouTubers Logan Paul and KSI joined forces to launch Prime, <laughs> a sports drink brand that's coming after the likes of Gatorade and Powerade. And now, almost exactly one year later, this... Hey, I did a taste test of the Prime and Prime Energy. It's on my King Extra channel. Go sub, you know what I'm saying? Stuff is everywhere. It's in stores. I don't think you're going to see this coming. Look at this. <laughs> no! God damn it, man. It's the official drink of the UFC. It's in almost every YouTube short that I get recommended. Prime. 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 This stuff even got itself a Super Bowl commercial. Facts. Hold on. Rewind that back. Is that Markiplier? Oh, that's good. Ah, damn it. I guess I gotta try it. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Welcome Let's to Food it. Theory, <laughs> where red hot drinks get cold hard facts. And let me just cut right to the chase with this one. Prime is massive and is currently on facts. track to be the most successful creator startup brand ever in its first year it reportedly has earned 250 million dollars in revenue now it's always important to remember that Bruh. revenue is very different from pro bro that's that I they just hit a year it's not even a year yet bro that's crazy 50 million dollars in revenue now it's always important to remember that revenue is very different from profits and that those sorts of numbers can be the result of a lot of different factors so take all of that with a grain of salt but to yep. give that 250 million dollars some context mr beast's feastables chocolate brand reportedly had 10 million dollars in sales <sighs> its first year crazy. anyway you slice it the numbers here are that's crazy bro because <clears throat> mr beast has more subs than them i feel like he has more influence over the people as well you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Granted, Logan and KSI are big, but like, Mr. Beast has like quadruple the subs they both have combined. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, bro. Or maybe a lot of people don't really like chocolate, and that's fine too. Probably had $10 million in sales its first year. Anyway, you slice it, the numbers here are eye watering. Here's the Facts. thing though, I don't buy it. Something's not right about all this. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm normally eager to celebrate the success of any creator led business, but <laughs> Logan Paul, for some reason, I just get a little suspicious. <laughs> Look at Paul. He puts his this man think about the scams he's been in the shit he's done hey this is different bro reader led business but logan paul <laughs> for some reason i just get a little suspicious of things that he puts his name to not really sure why <laughs> today we're investigating logan paul's yep. cryptos a blockchain game that made millions but never worked i'm moving to puerto rico i feel like people are wondering why puerto rico right taxes it's one vertical it's a big one we found a dead oh body. god this shit yeah. I want to apologize to the internet. Yeah, I can't quite put my finger on it. Just a hunch, I guess. So today, I wanted to take a closer look <laughs> I don't at blame Prime you. to see if it's really the wonder product everyone's making it out to be. Is this the next major thing in sports hydration? Or is it yet another Logan Paul get rich quick scheme? Spoiler I alert. It. It's a little bit of both, actually. So the thing that I've been seeing crop you up think again so? and again have been videos like this, where Logan compares popular sports drinks to Prime. Prime versus Gatorade. Prime versus Red Bull. Prime versus Liquid Ice. IV. All right, we're going bottle for bottle. These are all facts. And every time it seems like it's a win for Prime. Then again, I suppose if it weren't, the video wouldn't exist in the first place, you know? So anyway, I wanted to zoom in on one of these stat battles to see if there's any truth to Logan's pitch. The one I want to focus on is against Prime's biggest rival, Gatorade, the yeah. granddaddy of sports beverages. And immediately, without any words even leaving his mouth, there's a red flag, the bottle difference. Off the bat, Logan is using Prime's 500 milliliter bottle, and he's comparing it against Gatorade. Gatorade's larger 591 milliliter bottle. So when he says things like this, Gatorade has 36 grams of sugar in it. Sure, it might be true. But that's also talking about a has bigger more. serving size. It's yeah. something that Logan even calls out later in the video. And a bigger bottle. But then doesn't correct the math for. So you know what? I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to compare the two drinks milliliter for milliliter rather than bottle for bottle like he does. He starts off with sugar. So we're going to do that too. 36 grams for Gatorade versus two for Prime. That'd be 60 milligrams per milliliter.
milliliter for Gatorade and 0.4 milligrams per milliliter for Prime. Victory for Prime, right? Yeah. Well, don't call this one just yet because he's not making a truthful comparison here. For the Gatorade, uh. the 36 grams he's pulling is from the total carbohydrate number on the nutrition label. But for Prime, he's pulling the total sugars amount, a lower subset mm. of the total. Hold on. 34 grams, 2 grams. Either way, it's still lower. But for Prime, he's pulling the total sugars amount, a lower subset of the total carbs number. If he were truly comparing the two drinks fairly and correcting for the volume of liquid, it'd be 28.7 grams of total sugar in Gatorade versus two in Prime. Still a win for Prime, yeah. and still by a wide margin, but at least the numbers are accurate and fair rather than <laughs> Facts. artificially skewed. Next Facts. up, calories. For Gatorade has 140 calories. Look at that. Prime only has 25. <clears throat> yeah, this is accurate. The higher sugar content is really propping up Gatorade. Gatorade's number here. Comparing per milliliter, Gatorade's looking at 0.25 calories per ml versus Prime's 0 0.05. Prime is literally a fifth of the calorie. Hey, y'all want my 100% review on these drinks? Go watch, you know what I'm saying? Go watch the video. But I will say, in terms of taste, ah, do I spoil it? I'm not gonna spoil it. Y'all gotta watch it. Once you normalize the data. Last but certainly not least, the biggie. The stat that seems to bury Gatorade. We're both electrolyte drinks. Gatorade has 350 milligrams of electrolytes. Prime doubles it with 825 milligrams of electrolytes. That is a massive difference. Literally a 2x difference. But 2x of what exactly? What do those numbers actually mean? Like, Gatorade has been the go-to sports drink for decades. Facts. How could this newcomer just swoop in and dominate so completely? This too set off a a lot of red Hype. flags for me. Too good to be true, right? Clearly something's gotta be wrong here. Well, let's start with the basics. The first thing that Logan says, they're both electrolyte drinks. What's that mean? Well, a sports drink, otherwise known as an electrolyte drink, is legally defined as any non-alcoholic beverage containing electrolytes or glucose that's intended to be consumed in order to replenish electrolytes that are lost during exercise. Quote unquote, sports drinks don't require FDA approval, so they won't include any kind of special labeling unless they have caffeine. So in general, this category is pretty darn broad. As far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any sort of minimum requirements for electrolytes, calories, no calories, sugar, vitamins, anything else. The definition is largely marketing based, which is why when you walk down the sports drinks section of the grocery store, there's a huge range of options Facts. with vastly different ingredients. Based Facts. on the loose definition that does exist though, safe to say that Prime qualifies as a sports drink and that having electrolytes has a lot to do with it. But that then begs the question, what is an electrolyte? When I first started writing this episode, I thought I had a rough idea, but I wasn't totally sure. It's just one of those words that gets tossed around a lot when you see the imagery of a sweaty Michael Jordan guzzling down a Gatorade or a football coach getting the whole water cooler dumped on him. But chemically, <laughs> what are they and why do you need them when you're playing sports? Well, at the basic level, electrolytes have the word electro in them, which is exactly what it sounds like, electricity. Electrolytes are charged molecules, meaning they can either have a positive or negative charge, and as a result, they play a big role in transporting things around your body. There are only eight electrolytes that are typically listed in foods. Sodium, potassium, chloride, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, and bicarbonate. Most of which probably sound somewhat familiar because you've been hearing about them since the 90s when they tried to make SpaghettiOs look healthy. In general, <laughs> electrolytes are responsible for helping your brain Yo. fire off messages between neurons, helping your cells produce energy, and regulating the amount of fluids in your body. When it comes to exercise, they also help regulate the contraction of all your muscles, meaning that if you lose too many electrolytes, your body physically can't send off the electrical charges it needs to flex your muscles anymore. And it turns out that when you exercise a lot, you lose a lot of electrolytes in your sweat. You see, since a large percentage of your body is water, and electrolytes are polar charged molecules, they move around really easily in your watery bloodstream. And they end up getting squeezed out the other end of your pores when you're getting sweaty with your best bros. The idea of drinking a sports drink instead of just water is that when you're exercising intensely for long periods of time, you're losing so much water that you're actually washing the electrolytes straight out of your system. And you're yeah. gonna start feeling tired and sluggish without those things. But how much are you really losing here? A few drops of Gatorade on the brow isn't going to be needing a 20 ounce of Gatorade and hundreds of milligrams of electrolytes, right? Well, not so fast. Of course, all exercise and water loss is going to be totally dependent on your body, your exercise routine, your environment. But in the case of serious athletes, we're not talking about a little sprinkle. In Carl Gisolfi's article, Water Requirements During Exercise in the Heat, he notes that while exercising in the heat, the body can lose as much as three to four liters of Sheesh. water every hour. Damn. That is 
almost a gallon. And you can lose Fuck. more than that over the course of several hours. A gallon of water lost is over eight pounds of body weight that you just sweated right out of your system. Which, if it sounds like a lot, it is. This That's is why you see lot, boxers gang. trying to sweat off the pounds before a weigh-in. Because fuck? water weight actually makes a massive difference. Unfortunately, yeah. you just can't sweat it out forever. As soon as you start to lose more than 2% of your total body weight in water, you actively start to experience symptoms of dehydration, including headaches, nausea, cramping, and fatigue. Because your body is shutting down without the ability to regulate and contract your muscles. That's for a 150-pound person, this means that losing more than 3 pounds of water, or just over 1 liter, can cause your whole game to suffer. And thus, you can really start to see why the sports drink market is such a thriving business. People working hard jobs all day are losing water and electrolytes constantly, and those Fuck. things need to be replaced. On the flip side, if you're like me and just popping into the gym to hit the old stride machine for 20 to 30 minutes a couple days a week, chances are you don't need to be refueling with sports beverages because you're not losing enough water and electrolytes. You can stick to the water, save some money, just stop being posers about it. Knowing all of this, do Logan's stats here line up? Yeah, kinda. If anything, he's underselling Prime in this category, which seems incredibly sussy for a guy like him. He says Prime has 820 what? category, which seems inc incredibly Logan Powell just sued in class action lawsuit for his role in crypto zoo along with Jeff. Sued in class lawsuit. Mm. He's sussy for a guy like him. He says Prime has 825 milligrams of electrolytes, but according to my calculation, it should be 835. 700 milligrams of potassium, 124 of magnesium, and 10 of sodium or salt. Gatorade, meanwhile, is exactly what he says it is. 270 milligrams of sodium and 80 of potassium for a grand total of 350. To recap, well, yes, some of the comparisons were biased in Logan's favor. When I normalize the data, Prime still won. Am yeah. I? Am I? Gonna have to give the dub to Logan? Ugh. No, not yet. Maybe the difference isn't nutritional. You don't want to. Taste based. Maybe the flavor of these things sucks. To know for sure, I bought every flavor of Prime, and then I bought every other sports drink on the market with similar flavors. In total, we had 52 drinks. Oh my God! Look at this shit. Hey yo. All right, green. Okay, blues, reds, purple. Strawberry. That white one? Yeah. Nah, this man was awesome shit this day, boy. Spanning Prime's seven core flavors. Though, to be fair, some categories were more contested than others. We then set up a series of blind taste tests to see which brand would come out on top. All right, Josiah, thanks for joining me here on Food Theory. We have uh, a selection hey, of basically every sports beverage that I can find at like the three local grocery stores. And I need you to go down the line and just tell me which is your favorite and what is your least favorite, please. Okay. Okay? Wow. Never heard of bile steel. That one tasted a bit saltier, actually, than these other two. My top was B. And my least favorite yeah. was D. C was my second favorite. Whoa! Okay. Ew. You just picked prime. <laughs> oh! Here we go. Ooh. Ooh, that one has a good aftertaste. That's really fruity. Ooh, actually, the aftertaste sucks. That's <laughs> <so> bad. <laughs> that one's about the same, but a little fruitier. C's the best one. As, as a Prime. true American, I, I need my high fructose corn syrup. So, you, sir, just picked Prime. <laughs> That's weird. What's that reaction? That's, like... Feels that feels like salty, immediately salty. <laughs> Again, oh, that's wildly different. Damn. That is, I wouldn't have said that was orange if I didn't know that was orange. I can tell you my worst two, <laughs> D and F. D and F, okay, are your worst two. Yeah, absolutely. Best, A and C, I think will be my top two. Okay, the one that you said is wildly different from the others, mm. and really flavorful. Yeah, E. That is prime. Okay, because it's like, it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I think F and D were worse from a flavor perspective, but it was just really. Are these? So I want to get. Bro, the, are these warm or cold? Cause it's better to drink them uh, cold for me at least. The action as an extra test subject, so I'm not involved with any of these from here on out. Ooh, much stronger. Okay, this is what I would typically assume is like a lemon lime sports beverage a little bit a little bit salty it kind of like sticks in the back of your teeth a little bit like mm. 
<laughs> That's prime. <laughs> yeah. I, I can almost guarantee, based on how <laughs> these flavor profiles have broken down, the thing that always has the, the densest, strongest flavor seems like it's always prime. Yeah. My favorite is that. That would, in fact, be prime. <laughs> I knew it! Yo. I knew it! Uh, you, yo. Oh, I like this one. I, I want to just say one thing, bro. The primes, bro, like, they don't have much sugar, but you fuck, it's, it's weird. You taste the fuck out of the sugar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it has so much flavor to the point. It's almost as if you're drinking just straight sugar. You know what I'm saying? That, that's how it felt for me. Like, you taste that shit. Oh, yuck. You don't oh, like it? Yuck. She don't like it. Okay, so this is like if you just took a really sweet flat drink and then you added mad sugar oregano to it i don't know so there's a slightly herbal flavor on the back and i don't mean herbal like like something nice that you'd want to drink i mean like something that you'd add to spaghetti sauce it was close for the one that i hated so the most strong. i think i'm I, i've got to go with g um it is a unique moment when i feel like i'm drinking part of like maybe my own stomach acid in a sweet <laughs> drink so we're gonna peg that one as the worst, followed closely by I. Damn. Interestingly, no sugar flavors tended to rank higher than any fully sugared brands, with Powerade Zero being the overall winner with the consistently highest rankings across the board. That said, no one brand dominated every flavor category. And while Prime didn't win everything, it certainly did win a few, with an especially strong yeah. performance in Tropical Punch. In general, it was consistently well received. Yeah, I'll tell you, bro, the flavors. The only hit. problem was that it was just much sweeter than any other sports drink brand. Yep. The other drinks tended to have flavors that felt thinner, a bit closer to water. Prime, meanwhile, was a lot like Kool-Aid or Pedialyte, a stronger, denser, more syrupy flavor, which yep. in turn made it feel, at least to me, heavier. <laughs> this man nailing it on the spot, boy. I ain't gonna lie. Some of these words I didn't use in my taste test, but like he got stronger, it. Stronger, denser, more syrupy flavor, which in turn That's made it feel, at least to me, heavier. Because of how dummy thick the flavor was, it wasn't really something that I or the rest of the team would actively reach for to recover from a workout. But just yeah. as a flavored water to drink around the house, yeah, that'd be great for that. Right. Even after the taste tests, there was something that I couldn't quite kick. All the other sports beverages did taste fundamentally different from Prime. They all had a slightly muted flavor, even sometimes a salty flavor flavor and yet yeah. here was prime tasted like a melted lollipop how how was the one drink with the least sugar content the one that tasted so much more sugary than the rest exactly and did it have a Yo. fundamentally different flavor than all the other sports drinks again something felt off about this something <laughs> keeps feeling off talk about to this me stuff what is it so i went back to the nutrition label again and talk that's when me. it hit me look again at the comparison of the electrolytes sure gatorade has 300 milligrams and prime has over 800 but the way they get to those numbers is vastly different. Prime has 10 milligrams of sodium, 124 of magnesium, and a whopping 700 milligrams of potassium. Gatorade, meanwhile, has 80 milligrams of potassium and 270 milligrams of sodium. The ratio here is almost completely reversed. That is why you're getting a salty flavor from all these other sports beverages. Mm. Logan's Prime has 70 times as much potassium as sodium. Gatorade, meanwhile, has a ton of sodium and a teeny ton tiny amount of potassium. Powerade, yep. same ratios as Gatorade. So I had to keep looking. Body armor, another top contender in our taste test is... All right. Just because these are like, I feel like these are the top dogs right here. Prime, good. It's good. But you, again, you taste the, like, it's sugary as fuck. Like, you taste the sugar. Gatorade is probably still my go-to. I would probably still pick up a Gatorade over any of these. Um... It is kind of flat, but it is still like I don't know, it just it's good. Powerade, I feel like it's neck and neck with Gatorade, but Powerade is maybe like a little more uh flat, a little more flat, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And then body armor, I wish I could just go for body armor, dead ass. Like, I want to like it, but it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just bland for me. Because I've tried, i tried the blue raspberry, i tried the strawberry lemonade, I think is what they have. I tried, and I tried another flavor. All three, bro, it just, it wasn't hitting, bro. And I'd still pick Gatorade over Body Armor. 
but I really want to like body armor. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Closer to prime, Bio Steel, the one Never with the juice this. boxes, came in with a completely different ratio than all the others with equal amounts of potassium and sodium. So that then brings us to what's probably the biggest question in all of this. What is the proper ratio for all these electrolytes? Is this the thing that's been nagging me about prime all along? Well, it's important to note that each electrolyte is responsible for something different. Sodium, which we get mostly from common table salt, is the most prevalent. And it basically exists in all the spaces outside and around your cells to help you regulate blood pH and your overall water levels. How much you're peeing out, how much your kidneys are filtering out, things like that. Potassium, on the other hand, works inside your cells to help produce ATP, the little energy molecules that help power your body. Potassium also works in your heart to make sure it's pumping normally. Too much or too little potassium and you could start having heart problems and irregular rhythms. Calcium and magnesium play smaller but still important roles in your muscle contraction and brain function, keeping you mentally and physically sharp. So, at the end of the day, it kind of seems like they're all important in their own right, so which ratio is the one we're aiming for in a sports drink? Well, remember the whole premise of a sports drink. It's to replace the electrolytes that you lose during exercise. That means that we don't need to worry yep. about every electrolyte in the body. We only need to focus on the ones that we're losing during said exercise. And we're not losing them all at the same rate here either. The average person sweat ratio of electrolytes is 220 milligrams of sodium for every 63 grams of potassium, 16 of calcium, and 8 of magnesium. That means that you're losing nearly three and a half times more sodium at any given time than any other electrolytes. And if you're doing the type of exercise that needs a sports drink, you need to find one that replaces sodium before worrying about anything else. Looking back at the ratios that we found across our sports drinks, it now comes down to which formula replenishes your electrolytes at the ratio closest to the sweat that you're losing. Knowing that, let's look at Prime. Sure, it has a ton of electrolytes, but none of them are the ones that you need to be replacing. Prime has given you a ton of potassium. This thing is practically a banana but you don't really need potassium in the middle of strenuous exercise. At least, you don't need it nearly as much as you need sodium. In your yeah. sweat, you lose sodium to potassium at a ratio of 3.5 to 1. But with Prime, you're giving your body 0 0.014 milligrams of sodium to 1 milligram of potassium. You are essentially completely missing the one electrolyte that your body needs the most while sporting. What about the other sports drinks Damn. on the block? Well, body armor's ratio is 0.05. It's actually very... <laughs> Bro, I wonder if Logan and KSI are watching this shit. They're like, oh fuck, they got us. What about the other sports drinks <laughs> on the block? Well, body armor's ratio is 0.05. It's actually very similar to Prime. Bio Steel is at least a one-to-one -one ratio with the same sodium and potassium content. I suspect that they're all sacrificing the sodium because it keeps these drinks tasting sweeter. More sodium yeah. means a saltier flavor like the traditional sports beverage of Gatorade. Speaking of Gatorade, Gatorade and Powerade both have astonishingly different ratios than these newer competitors. With Gatorade at a ratio of 3.4 sodium to potassium and Powerade at the very top of the scale with 4.1 milligrams of sodium to potassium, both coming in shockingly close to the actual ratios of real mm. life sweat. This, in yep. turn, makes them infinitely more effective than the other three options at actually doing <sighs> what they say they're doing, replacing what your body loses during exercise. Don't get me wrong, feel free to sprinkle your coconut water on whatever you want. It's great that a lot of these new sports beverages don't have the dyes and preservatives and all the added sugar, Facts. but at the end of the day, the reason they're tasting so much sweeter than the Gatorades of the world. It's because you eat in a you eat in 30 blocks of them bitches every time you sip prime bro i swear is that they're missing the main <laughs> ingredients that sports drinks need to be having salt in the form of electrolytes for really bottling and feeding you back your own sweat gatorade has made their drinks taste remarkably good over the years but the thing Facts. is at some point if you're sweating salt the only way to get it back into your body is to drink it not paper over it with a bunch of other filler electrolytes that you don't need what's the conclusion here honestly that the definition of sports drinks and rehydration beverages are just too broad ill-defined if you're looking yep. to replace sweat in your body you need something with more sodium something that prime does not deliver on that said it's not like logan is pulling a scam here or anything he is delivering on exactly what he says he is a drink full of electrolytes more than any other sports drink in the space but electrolytes aren't equivalent they don't function the same the formulation of prime is fundamentally delivering a different product than the gatorades and powerades of the world which in turn mm. allows it to taste less salt yeah i ain't gonna lie bro like he said earlier, Prime is like a, I just feel like it's a drink you want to drink at home while you're chilling. You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't want to drink water and you want to stay away from juice, obviously, just get you a little Prime and you're chilling. That's what it is to me too. Gatorade and Powerade, like I said, 
For me, they're neck and neck. Pyrate is more flat of a taste. I would go with Gatorade every trip. And it's good to know that, you know, these two is way better for you while working out type shit. You know what I'm saying? Because there is people out here getting primed strictly for the workouts. And it's like, you kind of doing, you kind of doing yourself a disservice. You're not know saying, um, nonetheless, prime does taste better than both of them. I will say that, but I, I just, for me, it's just so much flavor. I, I, it's just too much. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I feel, I feel like I'm drinking like a, like a lollipop, bro. Like straight candy. I'm drinking that shit. I'm going Gatorade. Salty while still competing in the same broad category. My personal concern is that other brands, seeing the threat to its consumers, might change their more scientifically accurate formulations to better compete with the increasing threat and better taste of Prime. Something that I suspect will end up being a net negative for the entire sports drink market. Mmm. Makes sense, my boy. Makes sense. You gotta think too, if they're six if they're doing well right now, they're not gonna change anything. It's like they're saying, don't break uh uh if it ain't broke, don't fix it or something like that, right? Like, they're going to keep it like that until, you know what I'm saying, this type of videos and uh, research gets more exposed to these companies. And now, you know, who, who's to say they're not going through lawsuits now because you feel me? I'm something that I suspect will end up being a net negative for the entire sports yep. drink market. Honestly, there's no comparison. You know what, Logan? For the first time, <laughs> I think we can actually agree. But <laughs> hey, that's just a theory. A food. Theory Facts. bottoms up the official sports drink when I was a but kid. Hey, water, you know, what I'm saying the best kind, too. What are you talking about? Finding hilarious how Matt Pat usually trying to be neutral in an encouraging party absolutely draws a line at Logan Paul. Facts, I said, I don't blame him though. I don't blame him. I just have to say that this is my favorite theory channel script in the last while. The others have been great, but the build up and pay off of this straight push was just fantastic. One thing to know, Matt had dismissed body armor because its ratio was low, but if you look at just how much there is, it still had 200 milligrams of sodium, so despite the total ratio being low in sodium, it still is packing almost as much of power rating Gatorade with just some extra potassium. Yeah, true. Yeah, again, for me though, body armor, I want to like it, bro. I really do. And I don't mind drinking it, but I just, I want to be able to say, let me get one. You feel me? And it, just, it don't be hitting for me, bro. You know what I'm saying? W video. I wonder if Logan and KSI watch this, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because, hey, it, I mean, it's bound to happen. You drop a product, everybody's going to want to get to, like, the, 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 the roots and the bottom of every single thing and, like, try to break it down and see how it, it, it benefits the human, doesn't benefit a human, you feel me? Or the consumer, I should say. Uh, but, yeah, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's bound to happen. But let me know what you guys thought. Let me know if you guys tasted it. And if you did, what's your favorite flavor? You know what I'm saying? That's my reaction. If y'all enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you haven't. And I'm out.